Today we've got more Jogger for now. We've got Francis Ty. I'm sure there's going to be some interesting things in this. I'm not going to know. So uh, yeah, let's jump straight into this one, man. Comme certains d'entre vous le savent, en huitième de mois est français. J'ai donc en quelque sorte une obligation de honorer mon héritage. Bro, why does the French like, like accent sound so sexy, dude? Everyone, I'm your host Barbie. Ah, France. Pretty much this everybody so has it. heard of this place. I mean, immediately images of wine, cafes, yeah. Yeah. embellished 18th century Baroque architecture, and people who really hate globalization of the English language. But take a step back even further, and France becomes a place with jaguars, coconuts, volcanoes, penguins, huh? grass skirts, war dances, bamboo flutes, witch dogs. Wait, 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 wait. France has jaguars and penguins? And a multifaceted history that has evolved into a people group into becoming one of the most notable nations on the planet. Alors, allons-y. <laughs> This is the one. The first thing you need to know about France is that it's not just European, but a transcontinental country that spans across 12 time zones, more than any other country in the world. Mais comment est-ce que possible? Laissez-moi expliquer, gros Okay, France what the hell? France is divided into two main parts. The European metropolitan France, where about 95% of the population lives, and the overseas French regions, departments, and territories, otherwise known as the Département et Territoire d'Outre-mer, or Dom Tom. Before we tell you what they are, let's explain the difference between them. Regions have exactly the same legal status as mainland France, and the same civil, penal code, and administrative social tax laws. However, they can be slightly adapted to suit the region's particular needs. In collectivities, the autonomy rises and they are empowered to make their own laws except in certain areas like defense, currency, trade, and diplomacy. The overseas regions are Guadeloupe and Martinique in the Caribbean, French Guyana in South America, which by the way right. is the Kuro Space Center, disputably the best in the world because it adds an extra gravitational slingshot effect because it's so close to the equator of the Earth, and Reunion oh. and Mayotte off the coast of East Africa. The overseas collectivities are French Polynesia, you've probably heard of Tahiti, that's French Polynesia, as well as Wallace and Futuna in the Pacific, Saint Pierre and Miquelon right off the coast of Canada, Saint Barlemy and Saint Martin, which is the only place in France that has a border with the Netherlands as the Dutch own the southern part of the island, located all in the Caribbean. The only islands that lie under the title of overseas Bro, so split. are the French Southern and Antarctic Islands, or the TAAF. These islands are made up of the Cruellen Islands, the Saint Paul and Amsterdam Islands, you can probably guess who used to own those, the Crozet Islands, Islands and Adelie Land, the claimed Adelie state of Antarctica Land. that is technically not recognized thanks to the Antarctic Treaty. And as of 2007, the scattered islands in the Indian Ocean, remember the Comoros episode, were added to make the fifth district of the territory, even though half of them are disputed with Comoros, Seychelles, and Mauritius. These islands are mostly uninhabited Ooh. and only house temporary military or scientific personnel. Finally, France administers two special territories that don't quite fall into any of previously mentioned categories. There's the uninhabited Clipperton Island off the coast of Mexico, which has a crazy murder story behind it. And Last but not least, Wait, there's New Caledonia, which has a special particular status out of the French administered overseas territories. New Caledonia is the only one that's vying for a kind of somewhat independence as the political power was passed to the native Kanak peoples. There is a weird dual French EU and New Caledonian citizenship thing going on. And in 2018, they will hold a referendum to either remain or leave France. And thanks to all these territories, they together give France the second largest executive economic zone in the world after the US. Yeah, so that's pretty much mad like what the hell okay, now let's go back to metropolitan europe france the country is located in western europe bordered by eight other nations like is france the um the, the like the biggest country like you know globally don't forget little andorra and monaco along is it so split Channel and the bay of biscay in the north and west as well as the mediterranean sea to the south mainland france is sometimes referred to you know what i don't understand you know i don't like with france right so I don't understand how, when you go to, I, su I suppose with like Italy, it's lower down, like it's lower, you know what I mean? Because when you go to France, you don't really ever think of like it being a hot country or a hot holiday destination, even though the south of France must be hot, right? But I never hear anybody going to France for like, you know, as they will go for Spain, the top of Spain, Italy, I I'm I'm guessing going Italy towards this, um, you know, tourist attractions, they're mainly like, you know, mid to lower maybe. But um, yeah, I never hear people go to France uh, for like a nice hot holiday. West, as like well even, as the, the even the South France. The South. Mainland France is sometimes referred to as the hexagon since if you tilt your head a little bit, it kind of looks like it has six sides. Quite frankly, I was always under the impression yeah. that it kind of looked like a teapot with feet. Mainland <laughs> France is also divided into 13 <laughs> regions, including Corsica Island, 18 altogether if you include the overseas regions, with the capital, largest city, as well as the main cultural and commercial center, Paris. We could Paris. talk on and on about Paris, what with the unbelievably designed metropolitan wow. layout. 
layout, the rich, vibrant atmosphere. Seen that before, the but Jesus. Of classically adorned historical sites along neo-contemporary architecture, the food, the shops, and of course, au soleil, sous la pluie, à midi, au à minuit, il y a tout ce que vous voulez au Champs Elysees. But that in itself, beautiful. We gotta get through three more segments. <laughs> Absolutely stunning. Paris twins, Charles de Gaulle and Orly International, as well as Nice, Côte d'Azur, and the second and third largest cities, Lyon Saint Exupéry and wow. Provence International. At around 643,000 square kilometers, France is the largest country in the EU. The interesting huh? thing about France is that it's kind of divided into areas that historically had their own distinct. Wait, am I tripping? France is bigger than Spain. Cultural identity. Some of the most notable ones being Occitania, Savoy, Brittany, Normandy, Alsace, a section of the Basque Country. Nice. I feel like people. I feel like I'm not the only one in this situation, right? I feel like people in general, like I feel like if unless you study geography or like you know it really well, I feel like people think France is a lot smaller than what it actually is. Or is that just me? It, surely that can't be me. But I, I've always thought France. With, like I've obviously seen France on the map many, many, many times. It's probably like the Mandela effect. I just always think it's smaller than what I actually see it to be. And the island of Corsica, which speaks its own dialect most French people can't even understand. I don't know These why. These regions contribute their own unique piece of the French pie. Speaking of pie, we all know about French food, which is great because we're going to discuss more about it in... If you look at France's physical makeup, you start to kind of understand why food plays such a huge role in their culture. Everything just kind of works out perfectly for them. For metropolitan France, big, rich, nourishing rivers and their tributaries like the Garonne, Dordogne, Loire, Seine, Meuse, and Rhône entangle the entire country. Bro, that sound is so west, sad. Allowing an abundance of irrigated crop fields to exist in nearly every corner of the country. Now add on top of that the fact that the country does not have any major fault lines. They enjoy a nice oceanic European climate and they don't suffer regularly nice. from any major natural catastrophes. Most of the country is made up Pretty of good. global flat plains or small rolling green hills that looks a bit like England cultivation and voila you have an agricultural gold mine in fact, there's more sun here in the EU France reportedly has the highest quality of soil performance and resilience and only a few spots like in the Caucasus region and parts of Eastern Europe and Southern Russia rank higher so there you go food haven in the south you reach the mountainous regions Ooh. of France including the Pyrenees along the wait 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 wait, wait, wait. I, I, I suppose wait is that where everyone does the skiing in the south of France I suppose because the mountains are so big, you know, it's not at the top. I was, gonna, I was just going to I was gonna make a stupid comment and say, but it's hard at the south of France. With Spain, the Massif Central <laughs> Plateaus, one of the most geologically studied places in Europe. Wow. In strange formation. The Alps all along the borders with Italy and Switzerland. By the way, Switzerland... Wait, hold on, okay. The Alps is where they do the skiing. The Alps all... Oh, okay. I, I, okay, I see it. I see it. They have the smallest part of the Alps. Right here. Along the border cool. with Italy and Switzerland. By the way, Switzerland was all like, yeah, I'm not going to share Lake Le Mans. It's mine. And that's how Geneva was born. The highest point in France, let alone all of the EU, is Mont Blanc, found in the French Alps along the border with Italy, only second in height to the Caucasus Mountains in all of Europe. If you consider the Caucasus region a part of Europe. Some people don't, but that's just, that's another story. France is a cornucopia of produce, dairy, and meat. Every region has their own specialty, but two things are everywhere. Cheese and wine. The French right, are the yeah. largest consumers of cheese with over 12 hundred different varieties i feel like everybody country. knows that about france a larger range of unconventionally consumed meat products most countries stick with beef chicken pork maybe lamb or goat and fish however the french yep. aren't satisfied with just that other animals like pheasant duck goose quail rabbit venison veal horse frogs and snails are consumed regularly speaking of which the national animal is the gallic rooster which is why you might typically see a lot of i think that is one thing like all all, all of the above maybe i'll try right like try the one thing i will never ever 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 try in my life bro and if you're from france and you watch this it like do you eat it what is it like snails i will never i, I couldn't i couldn't I, I i legit couldn't roosters on french affiliated symbols in fact france is one of the most entomophagous that's insect eating countries in europe how do you eat the snail snails are oh. estimated to be consumed every year by the french especially in burgundy the largest huh? french affiliated symbols in fact france is one of the most entomophagous that's insect eating countries in europe as about 700 million snails are estimated to be consumed every year by the oh bro no no <laughs> yo <laughs> I low-key want to, like, know what it tastes like, but I never want to try it in my life. Like, I genuinely couldn't bring myself to eat a snail. Like, I... I <laughs>
Snail was, I see them on the ground, just slimy, leaving in some slime trail. No, there's no way that's going in my stomach. French, especially in Burgundy, the largest snail producing region in France. Unfortunately, due to the fact that the French are the highest consumers of raw or mildly cooked red meats, a huge portion of the population is either exposed or chronically infected by the tax. You guys gotta let me know what it's like. Disputably, over half the population is suspected to have. This little guy eventually finds its way into your brain, changes people's behaviors into being either more caring or aggressive and suspicious. Look it up. I'm not even joking. The huh? Have. This little over half the population of the population largest snail producing region in France. Unfortunately, due to the fact that the French are the highest consumers of raw or mildly cooked red meats, a huge portion of the population is either exposed or chronically infected by the Taxoplasma gondii parasite that disputably over half the population is suspected to have. This little guy eventually finds its way into your brain, changes people's behaviors into being either more caring or aggressive and suspicious. Look it up, I'm not even joking. Oh my the god. Are for their charcuterie and fondue, Brittany for its crepes, Cantal for its chestnuts, Dijon for its mustard, La Veyron for Allegro, Go Rem for its champagne. Ooh, oh, 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 I want to go to, I'm going to go to France. I'm going to go to Brittany. Um, <laughs> that's not called Brittany, is it? That's <laughs> listen, listen, I'm actually dyslexic. <laughs> Brittany, Brittany. I'm going with Brittany. I'm going with Brittany, then Reims. Um, I'm so sorry for this, by the way. I, I, you know, I'm just going to say about the pictures. Craps, champagne, whatever this is. Oh, this looks good. Whatever this is. Is, is this ham? This looks good as well. And Don't know what that is. Bordeaux. Now, first of all, every region of France likes to claim that they have the best wine. However, okay. it's widely known that Bordeaux is disputably the home of the Bordeaux. largest wine vineyards in the world, pumping out over half a billion liters of wine a year. The French take their produce maintenance very seriously and became the first country in the world to ban supermarkets from throwing away or destroying unsold food since February of 2016. All businesses must donate so waste wastage to either charities or food banks cool. to combat crop wastage on farms. France has even opened up ugly That's really good. vegetable shops in which you can buy disfigured produce for 30% off other than foodstuffs though main exports are aircraft chemicals machinery iron and steel electronics motor vehicles and pharmaceuticals of course the overseas territories and regions also have climates and topographies that are completely different the caribbean islands and guyana enjoy a warm caribbean well yeah even though they are like you know french you know the french territories they are technically like different you know what i mean they're, they're wet like they're so far away from france it's crazy Guyana being part of the amazon having one of the highest forest cover densities in the world at over 95 percent with over 1100 species of birds and reptiles wow. and mammals found wow wow reunion and my oh okay family. that's why they have jaguars okay 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 we're not talking about like france mainland okay coast of africa have deep jungle Makes ravines and a common volcanic activity going on the scattered islands are mostly uninhabited sandbanks and lagoons with nothing more than just a few trees and shrubs the southern antarctic islands are rocky and desolate with few grasses and vegetation Kerwellen has these cabbage looking things going on and these islands typically freeze over in the winter with penguins stampeding off the coast so New sick and french polynesia are tropical pacific Ooh. islands that enjoy an abundance of rich unspoiled fruit, brush, and colorful flowers and of course, Adeli land is like all ice and Antarctica. All right, we've discussed borders, boundaries, mountains, food, volcanoes. Now let's talk about who's running the entire show. France is a country of people that are very, very intent on making sure that you know they are French. First, yeah. The country has about 67 million people and is the second largest in Europe after Germany, making 13% of the EU alone. About 85% of the population is white, 10% are North African, mostly from the Maghreb regions, a little over 3% are black, and a little less than 2% are Asian. The currency is the euro, they use the type CEF outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road, which makes things interesting when their neighbors from the UK come across the... You know what? I don't know why I haven't checked yet, but is there a geography now UK or England? I don't think there is. I would have seen it, surely. But I, I just, like, I low-key want to, like, just see what he says about England and what kind of stats there now is. I'm going to look after people. this. Most white I don't think people have some or partial Celtic or Gaulish origins as historically the Gauls inhabited most of the centralized regions of modern day France. That means genetically, the French and British have a lot more in common than they think. Of course, an admixture of Latin and Germanic roots also applies as all three people groups had their stake of claim in France as well. The name France even came from the Germanic Frank tribe. French is of course the official language. However, regional dialects do exist, but for the most part, they do pretty well at making sure everyone speaks it. 
Granted, the linguistic zones that we mentioned before each have their own flag, still cling on to their mother tongue, and sometimes you can even find cool. street signs written in these languages. For example, Breton, a Celtic-based language related to Welsh and Irish found in Brittany, Basque in the Basque country. It was Brittany. It was Brittany, bro. I was right. <laughs> languages, for example, Breton, a Celtic-based language related to Welsh and Irish, found in Brittany, Basque, and I like credit myself to Britannia. Of course, can have like this strange half French, half Italian hybrid thing going on. Keep in mind, though, most of the languages spoken in the linguistic zones are kind of dying out, and only the older generation really retains daily conversation in those languages. Oh, yeah. Outside of metropolitan France, the overseas departments and territories each speak French, but in addition, typically have their own creoles or dialects. For example, in the Caribbean, Martinique and Guadeloupe might say. Sac à marché, tout bon man, timal man. In Reunion or Mayotte, they might say, Coiffe, comment il est? Ah. Coiffe? France is the most visited country in the world, as more people than the entire population of France visit France annually at about 80 million. Culture wise, there is. Okay, two I did not expect that at all. What the hell? I did not expect that in the slide. Like, I know France is a, you know, a touristy place. And a lot of people. Maybe I just don't know many people personally that goes to France. Maybe that's just it. Like, my parents have been to France, but like, most of the people that I know go to Greece or Spain, right? And they constantly go in Greece or Spain. Like, it's just on repeat. So, yeah, surprise, surprise, surprise. But then again, like, yeah, you know, people in your, yeah. Too much yeah. to discuss. I mean, we are talking millennia of I suppose tribes, Paris wars, is crazily empires, heroes, populated. villains, artists, poets, architects, kings, or queens, tourists. guillotines, revolutions, inventions, oh, music, a lot dance, of history. Clothing, fashion, cinema, a lot scenes, of history. Victories, losses, folklore, science, literature, medicine, and baguettes. To cover it all, we would need a whole separate <laughs> YouTube channel. But for what it's worth, since the Middle oh, Ages, Fred so has good. been able to show time after time again that it has been a global force to be reckoned with. Oh, I mean, yeah. The French at one point was the second largest empire in the world, spanning across virtually every region on every continent. One thing you have to understand is that in a fast-growing Anglophone-driven global economy, France is very, very firmly intent on preserving the French language and culture. The governmentally sanctioned Académie Française has aimed at doing this since 1634. They do things like, somewhat unsuccessfully, banning foreign words such as blog, hashtag, parking, email, and weekend. In addition, the French media's top regulators, the CSA and CNC, have strictly enforced policies that require all music on private radio to be at least of 40% French origin and 70% in the French language between the hours of what? 8 p.m. And half of the music quota must be less than six months old. Everything must be French. France is, of course, home to a plethora of notable figures in every field of academia and athleticism. I yeah. Mean, we have almost 70 Nobel Peace Prize winners, including famous chemist Pierre and Marie Curie. Few people know that they had a daughter who also became a notable scientist. Other scientists, writers, and philosophers like Descartes, Pascal, Baudelaire, Flaubert, Pasteur, Châtelet, Bouton, who, by the way, invented the metric system. Musicians like Ramlot, Lully, Debussy, Jacques Brel, Edith Piaf. Of course, we can't forget the fashion icons, Louis Vuitton, Coco Chanel, and Christine Duart. I mean, it's no secret, France is often touted as the fashion capital of the world. Artists yeah. like Monet, Cézanne, Renoir, Degas, Manet, and Gauguin. And of course, what's an episode about France without mentioning anything about kings Louis XIV and XVI, Joan of Arc, and Napoleon? In a simple way of putting it, French Napoleon. culture is very vibrant and proud. The French love where they've come from and how they go about doing things. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen so many videos and so many clips. The French are so fucking loud, proud, and it's crazy. If you if you've never seen French, like if you're watching this, you're not from France. If you've never seen French at a football game, oh the passion that they show, oh my god, oh my god, you think it's a war zone. You lit like they're, they're sending off flares, they're sending off smoke, but bro, it's crazy. Once played a major role crazy. To this day, even as a secular state with dwindling church attendees, many French people still, in the very least, identify nominally as Catholic, mostly for a cultural thing. It's just their history, and they don't want to toss it away. They also love taking uh. breaks and getting their sleep. On average, the French get about 8.83 hours of sleep every day, more than any other country in the developed world. And they also have some of the shortest work weeks. So the wine. Seven hours <laughs> on average a day, and that's enough for them. Them. It's not uncommon Wait, what? to work weeks with only about six to seven hours on average a day. And that's right. enough for them. It's not uncommon to see people taking time off in the middle of the day, early evening, just to relax and take a nap. They even have a word for it. L'heure de l'apéro, which literally translates to the hour of the aperitif. People can also claim state pension at age 62, making it one of the lowest retirement ages in the world. And of course, the sport French people rank highest in the world going on strike. I mean, the last thing you want to do is interrupt a Frenchman's nap during a six-hour shift. With oh, I've seen so many clips changes. of this. Yep, the world can be a cruel, cruel place. Let's see how France survives in the jungle. When it comes to France, they don't discriminate. 
They hate everyone equally. No, France has their eyes on a few people, and when they see what they like, they cling on and make you a treasure. First of all, Francophone nations and Latin-based former Roman legacy nations generally get the high seats, especially their neighbors like Switzerland, Luxembourg, Italy, and Spain. Quebec, Canada is to France kind of like what the USA is to the UK. They adore each other, they love each other's accents, but they love making fun of each other even more, even though they are really close. Algeria, Morocco, and Tunisia are the closest African nations as they make up the largest African immigrant demographics, followed by Sub-Saharan African countries countries like Cameroon and Côte d'Ivoire, or Ivory Coast. For France, Japan is seen as like the epitome of exoticism. Similar to themselves, the Japanese have a rich culture of noble tradition, things like castles, attire, and food. Likewise, Japan sort of shares the same mutual fascination and see France as like its European alternate universe twin. There's no two countries that like to poke fun of and borderline harass each other with the French as the UK and the USA. As historical rivals with the UK, I mean, they did have a hundred year war with them, yeah. and the USA busting their chops about World War II all the time. All sides like to satirize each other in cartoons and media all the time. Nonetheless, they are actually really close. The UK and France have been crossing borders and intermarrying for centuries. Commerce and student exchanges are high, and the US was helped by the French during the Revolutionary War, and they even gave the Statue of Liberty as a present. So fellow Americans, thank France for Lady Liberty, okay? It was a kind gesture. France's best friends, though, would probably be Germany and Belgium. It's kind of funny because historically, the only country that was consistently an opponent of France was Germany. Germany. Ever since the split of Charlemagne's empire in three, most of Europe no, times we've driven done. by the overarching rivalry between variations of France and all variations of Germany, including the Holy Roman Empire, the Teutonic Order, Prussia, and of course, the Third Reich. But the plot twist was the creation of the EU. Following Robert Schumann's speech that states explicitly that for Europe to even hope to work, the millennia-old rivalry between France and Germany has to be resolved for good. Ever since 1950, France and Germany have taken a lot of political inspiration off of each other. Heads of states have visited each other on numerous occasions. Cool. Both countries have been the biggest advocates for the survival of the Union. And Belgium is like their little brother that moved out and got a Dutch-speaking roommate and visits France every so often to raid their fridge and do their laundry. <laughs> In conclusion, les Français sont connus pour être intrépides, turbulents, mais qui gardent quand même un certain charme. Ils ont parfois l'air désinvolte, mais bon, essaye de vivre dans un pays envahi 24 heures sur 24, 7 jours sur 7, par dehors de toi. Oh, I love the accent so much, man. Pour votre gastronomie et vous demandez de vous plaire au moindre de leur désir sans même vous dire un petit merci. Oh, France, faut le comprendre. Stay tuned. France's rich former little colony Gabon is coming up next. Really cool. Really good video. I enjoyed that one. I actually learned quite a bit about France, which is pretty cool. If you guys got any video recommendations or anything you want to let me know about this video, leave them down in the comments below. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.